our dear viewers and welcome uh, to a new edition of the daily debate in today's edition we are going to talk about the investment in Egypt and how Egypt is seeking to treble the foreign direct investment for 30 billion US dollar at uh, the beginning I would like to uh, greet uh, my dear guest in the studio Mr. Raed Alam, our economic expert hello Hi. sir and thank you so much thank for you. being with us uh, our dear viewers before starting our interviews our dear guests will take this report about the investment in Egypt and the sustainable development strategy for 2030. From infrastructure to renewable energies, Egypt offers plenty of untapped investment opportunities. With its fast-growing young population, strategic location and ambitious infrastructure plans, Egypt is well positioned to draw new foreign investors to its range of booming economic sectors. Egypt's reform program, launched in 2016, has gradually removed expensive and unsustainable energy subsidies. The Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, said in a 2020 investment policy review that these reform efforts should help draw investment in sectors with a competitive advantage. Egypt's landmark 2017 investment law improved the business landscape by reducing barriers for international companies in combination with a wide range of tax breaks. Furthermore, Egypt's reform drive is underpinned by a robust commitment to delivering price, fiscal and currency stability, a policy which is likely to fuel future expansion. Egypt's economic expansion, despite the coronavirus pandemic, is another testament to its resilience when a government-sponsored emergency package of fiscal, monetary and social measures absorbed some of the shock to the country's crucial services sector. With a population of over 100 million, Egypt is North Africa's biggest market, offering a range of untapped investment opportunities. Other promising sectors include transportation, housing, information technology, agribusiness and manufacturing. Through infrastructure upgrades, the Egyptian government aims to expand the metro network to ease congestion in Cairo, which, with its greater metropolitan area, is home to more than 20 million people. Infrastructure projects currently in the pipeline are estimated to be worth between 300 and 400 billion U.S. dollars. One massive business opportunity for foreign companies is the ambitious construction of Egypt's new administrative capital in East Cairo, which is expected to house about 6.5 million people and feature a 650-kilometer road network. Egypt offers a compelling investment case through its reforms, young population and proximity to mature and developing markets in Europe the Middle East and Africa. With its unique market knowledge and state-of-the-art digital capabilities, Egypt attracts the right partner to support investments and long-term business growth. Welcome back and uh, uh, welcome again, uh, Mr. Raed Alam. Sir, how do you see actually the fragmentation of the global trade uh, as an opportunity for Egypt in order to uh, diversify its uh, trade opportunities and partnership and to try to attract more foreign direct investments? Okay. Uh, we have to give some figures yes. to start with, okay, mm -hmm. to uh, highlight what um, policy we can follow, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, actually, uh, our uh, exports mm -hmm. reaches around 40 billion, mm. when our imports is 73. Mm. So we have a gap of deficit around 33 billion dollars, yes. which is a, a big, or you can say, a huge uh, value. Okay. Right. So if we consider okay that some investors who uh, export to Egypt or we import for them yeah okay 
decide that we are going to save mm -hmm. the cost of shipping, the cost of special packing for um, uh, mm -hmm. exportation, okay, and make some uh, manufacturing here, mm -hmm. okay, or assembling as well, okay. So this is a good start. A good start to attract uh, because uh, we have two elements. Yeah. Uh, the number of population, okay, mm -hmm. and actually uh, Egypt is a gate for the Africa and the Arab countries. Indeed. We know that some Arab countries are now our uh, open market and mm -hmm. uh, they have some nice or easy policy to follow, but still up to now we are the gate for Africa and the Arab countries. Mm -hmm. So, if I would like uh, to enhance our investment or the direct investment, okay, we have to put this idea to the investors, mm. okay. We have to make some calculation. We said, okay, this product is $100 or something like this, mm -hmm. okay. If you are going to manufacturing here with uh, the, uh, the uh, power supply, with uh, uh, cheap uh, labor and, mm -hmm. and, and so and so, okay. You maybe you will save $20, so you will maximize your profit, mm. okay? Uh, I think this is a good idea or a good approach to approach such things. Yes, indeed. So to what extent the global uh, crisis, the global situation, um, the war uh, in the Gaza Strip, uh, the Middle East situation, the tension in the Middle East, as well as the Russian-Ukrainian war, are affecting the opportunities of uh, investment here. Yes and no. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> uh, as we said usually, okay, uh, capital mm. is a risky, okay, to move on or, or mm. out. On or out. Okay. Mm. So it is good that there is some conflict in these countries or in these areas. So uh, the stability of Egypt, okay, is very promising to attract some investments. Mm. But the problem is, although we are in the same area of that conflict, mm. yes. okay, mm. it makes some people reconsidering or rethinking, okay, can we go now or still uh, mm. a little bit, wa uh, waiting a little bit. The idea is, are we asking for a huge investment mm. or for small investments? If we focusing in the small industries, okay, 90% oh. will uh, be succeeded, okay? Yeah. If we look for a huge companies or huge investments, mm -hmm. okay, I think it will be a little bit harder to do. Yes, especially with the, the current situation in the reach. Yes. Indeed. Uh, so to what extent also the security of uh, the Red Sea uh, is affecting uh, the opportunities of investment in the region as well? As uh, if we talk about security in the Red Sea, if you talk about the Swiss Canal Indeed. or... Yeah. Indeed, and the whole, uh, of course, situation because of uh, the situation in the region. Okay. Uh, I think Red Sea is a little bit far away on these uh, uh, um, actions, okay, except for... Uh, Subian, uh, whatever yes. this uh, yeah. bias, okay. <laughs> but uh, actually, uh, if you are going to think about developing the area of Swiss Canal, mm. okay, and to make some industries, especially for mm. shipping, logistics, uh, mm. um, uh, fixing shipments, uh, supplies, and so on, so, and we put it actually, okay, in some free zone. Okay, mm. I think it will be succeeded. Okay, it of will course. take some time, but it will succeed because mm. up till now, Swiss Canal is a major of course. Uh, way okay, mm -hmm. between uh, East and, and West. Uh, and West. Mm -hmm. Sir, can Egypt as a pivotal investment hub attract investment from the non-aligned countries looking for a stable and strategic investment destination? Okay, again, some figures, okay. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, Egypt earned around 10 billion, mm. 10 billion dollars investment last year. Mm. Okay, which is 
uh, a good number. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it will uh, compromise the second uh, uh, country in the region that granted this uh, amount. Yeah. And it compromises also 20% of the Africa direct investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Although this, okay, we talk about can we ally uh, with some uh, different countries or mm -hmm. suppliers? Yes. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. But let me uh, tell you something. Mm -hmm. uh, what the, the experience of the Chinese or the China, okay? Mm -hmm. They started with small industries and penetrate some markets, not mm -hmm. all the markets, mm -hmm. and expanding, okay? If we would like to do the same, okay, we have to come up, okay, with some, again, yeah. small industries, okay, and make some deals with other countries as counter trade, okay, to uh, ignore the problem of uh, how the currency, okay, mm -hmm. uh, counter trade, you take our product and we will take your products and so on. Okay, uh, there is a lot of things we can do it, especially with the nearby countries, especially in Africa, okay, and Arab countries. Indeed. Sir, Egypt also is aiming to be a regional hub for the green hydrogen by the year 2026 and the global center for green hydrogen production by 2030. How do you see this plan for Egypt? This is... Uh, actually the future of the world mm. because of the crisis of the power supply what uh, whatever kind of power yes. supply so they would like to use the green uh, hydrogen. hydrogen okay mm. uh, German started to study a lot of things and started to produce this uh, this is a good project but it depends I don't know actually uh, how it cost as a project investment cost okay mm. But uh, this is a good thing to do, okay, mm -hmm. especially we are going to stay. We need uh, a green uh, yes. energy for uh, uh, electricity stations, water stations, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So it is uh, a good project, but I don't know, uh, actually, if we, uh, I consider the value, okay, I can tell you if it is okay or not. Mm. Sir, how do you see Egypt's future of investment opportunities and what is the role of the private sector actually in attracting the foreign direct investment uh, to the local market? Okay. Uh, for the time being, we cannot say very clear vision okay, about uh, what is going with uh, direct investment mm. because there is a lot of factors affecting uh, the transfer of money. Okay. Mm. But for the private sector, mm -hmm. okay, especially for the traders, <coughs> especially for the traders, yes. we have to make some uh, learning curve or something like this to um, turn them from traders to mm. manufacturers. Mm. Okay, so if they can compromise a good relation with uh, uh, importers, mm. okay, so they can build some project here in Egypt okay mm. to produce whatever we import okay mm. which is a very very important because 90% of the traders yes. are Egyptian private sector yes. okay instead of importing whatever you, you import why not you are going to manufacturing here Oh. Okay, so Indeed. if you have a long relation with some uh, exporter, uh, outside exporters, so why you don't go and try to convince him, okay, to come and to make some investment, especially oh. that we have a lot of changes, okay, in the investment law, as you can go very fast to establish oh. a company or something yeah. like this, but the problem is, our, not the problem we have, to modify a little bit uh, the employee of uh, the investment authorities, yes. okay, to be more upgradable, uh, more um, uh, informative, okay, mm -hmm. uh, easy to communicate, and so on. Yes. Okay. From your point of view, as you have kindly mentioned, this uh, the training of uh, the uh, state employees, especially in the investment sector. How do you see here the uh, uh, effort that should be exerted yet uh, in order to uh, facilitate 
the environment of investment uh, in Egypt in order to give incentives and facilitate the investment opportunities in Egypt? Uh, uh, what more should be done? Uh, uh, actually, to start with, uh, we have to put some criteria very clear and the regulation very clear, okay? Not maybe this or maybe not, oh, okay? Firm and clear. Yeah, firm and clear, oh. okay? And to be followed properly, okay? Not there is some actually uh, oh. go here and there, okay? Oh. Second, definitely we have to make some front offices, okay, in some countries, okay, to give the people initial, initial, okay, ideas about the opportunities. Mm. Uh, when I said initial, I'm not saying, okay, we can go to a project for transportation, mm -hmm. okay. Actually, we talk about initial feasibility study, maybe 10 mm. to 15 paper, uh, sheet yes. of papers and say, this is to start with, mm. okay, and if the, uh, um, the investor like it, okay, okay, yes. let us go further more, yes. okay. To do this, you need some calibers, okay, some mm. kind of <coughs> education, okay, uh, m understanding well mm. what he is talking about. It yeah. is not a matter of uh, we are the best people in the country. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Indeed. Sir, how do you see the role here of the private sector in order to try to attract more FDI? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, our private sector uh, oh. varies, oh. okay, maybe uh, between big companies or holding companies and the small companies. Oh. Okay. I believe the big companies are more applicable, okay, to do this. Uh. Small companies, uh, all the ones they think about is just uh, to make some profit. Uh. Uh, here we can say, okay, why we put some idea uh. to merge three or four small companies together, uh. okay? So they have the problem, uh, they, they have the power, okay? to make some R&D, to have the oh. power uh, to compete, they have the power to uh, establish more powerful network, yeah. okay? There is a lot of ideas we can follow, okay? Of but course. we have uh, to put this in um, a good formula, oh. a good incentive, okay? If we are going to say, let us go for whatever, mm -hmm. laser companies or something like uh, laser, uh, laser production companies, okay? Yeah. Okay, what is the problem between us and Turkey? Yes. Okay, well, what's the difference? Mm. Our laser is more, more, more excellent than mm. Turkey. But the design, mm. the, the chemical they use is a different, mm. okay? Why? small industries say I'm not going to do this mm -hmm. because it's cost a cost. lot. Mm -hmm. It is costy. Mm -hmm. But if there are three or four <coughs> mm -hmm. lizard uh, companies working together, definitely yeah. uh, the matter will differ. Yes, indeed. Uh, Mr. Raid Alam, our economic expert, thank you so much, sir, for thank your you. input and for being our guest for today. Thank it you. It was a real pleasure, sir. Our dear viewers, with that, we come to, this, uh, to the end of this edition of the Daily Debate. Uh, till uh, uh, Saturday with another uh, crew, and many thanks for watching. I'm Hesir Abiyah.